<laughs> test, one, two, three, test. You're live, brother. No shadow. Okay, we have uh, antique white. This is the finish going to go on. This is antique and the walls are going to be Swiss coffee. I'm going to roll the finish, one coat on the wall starting now. We're going to turn the roller sideways and get as close as possible to the ceiling. You need that. And then we do. And then we have a little bit of of uh, contrast with the color, the antique on the walls, and the Swiss coffee on the ceiling. And then we have a little bit of a contrast for the color. Keep it and on the ceiling. The crown molding will be Swiss coffee also, which will offset the color of the walls. So what we have what about, oh, I see. is a nice finish. Yeah. What's going on here? You haven't noticed we're putting the, the first color. coat of finished paint dark, dark, yeah. on the wall. And Jim just installed a PVA primer, the sealer, the universal primer on the walls. We spray textured the walls before that. And now he's putting a full coat of the finished paint. What color did you say this was? It's antique white eggshell finish. That's just what they decided to use. Antique We're in a kitchen white. and dinette area. We yeah, had some antique house white at home. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Palm Springs tan. Oh yeah. Palm That's Springs tan was out there. Around. Yeah. Palm yeah, I That's remember that color. They had in the model. Oh. Now, do you have to cut this into the baseboard, yeah. Jim, this time? I'm just going to cut it, rough cut it in, and then when I come back with the finished coat on the base, I'll, I'll just use the uh, brush and then follow the line and cut it in final on the base from the base paint, baseboard paint up to the, I'll cut that in, then just rough cut yeah. it in with the color. Okay, because this baseboard is going to be repainted, and that's why he's doing yeah, it. Yeah, baseboard's going to be repainted, and I'm just going to brush a nice line right across the top of the base because it will be all sealed and the paint will flow right across as I brush on with a good cut-in brush I can make that line nice and clean because I got a new surface to work with. Yeah. Same thing with the, with the door casing that has not been painted before that's MDF they used a pre-primed MDF on the door casing and he's going to paint that. Door casing words. Yeah, we got to that Okay, he's got some masking tape up there, but he's going to paint that and cut that into yep. the wall paint. So you always do your walls first, obviously. Yeah. Then you go back this and you paint can. your door casings and your trim and cut yeah. in. So this this one, way, if he gets any of the wall paint on the on there, he can wipe it off and then cut that back in with his right. finished paint on the on the baseboard. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can definitely see the color change the primer being white to the finish being antique white. Dude, so you're just, this is the first coat. You're going to put two coats on. And again, I see that you're not using an extension pole with your roller. Yeah, it's just too confined area here to okay. have a long pole. And you're a little bit taller than I am, and, and you seem to be able to reach the ceiling fairly close without yeah, getting up and down off the yeah, ladder. That's yeah. why I like to use a, a oh. little extension pole for myself or, yeah. or a broom handle, whatever. Exactly. And then when I'm, when I'm doing a different color on the lid, yeah. like we're having a white color, I'll turn the roller sideways like this and get as close as possible to the ceiling and then finish off cutting it in with a brush. Right, so you do. The closer you get with a roller, you have less area you have to brush. Yeah, but so, you did that pretty easy. Now, for a first timer, if yeah. their hand's not as steady as yours, if they haven't done it a while, yeah. I don't know if they should get up that close. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like yeah you, that just, color. you just gotta be. Because you did that you know, pretty good. You gotta be mindful of how yeah, it is. close you are. Yeah. And usually with a nine inch yeah, roller, you have more control than with a bigger roller to. Uh, uh, get close as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now you're using a lambskin roller for these walls, aren't you? Yes, sir. We got. Uh, you like that, don't you? Yeah, we've used it already. 
two at a time with the primer and the sealing paint. So with the same roller we're using, we okay. just do a quick, quick wash out because, like I said earlier, the the paint releases from the roller really quick. So yeah, it doesn't take you long to wash it out, and you have the same roller for all three. Finishes. And I'm glad you're re-explaining this because some people may have not seen you install the primer or yeah. install the finished paint on the ceiling. That's right. And yeah. If you haven't watched that, I've got videos of that on my YouTube channel too. You got to check that stuff out because we got Jim here. Yeah. He's a professional painter and he's showing us the professional way to paint walls and trim and all that. Now I've showed you other ways on how I've done it. You might get you've seen me do some paint you thought oh you know I'm just gonna do it the way Joe says well we're getting Jim here to show us some other tips and techniques you might not have learned from video Joe that's me from the videos that I did no, you have. and I want to just let you know hey I always say if Joe can do it you can do it but in this case, if Jim right here can do it, you can do it too. Yeah. Right, Jim? That's right. Yeah, you just got to be patient and don't be afraid of doing a project. Even for a first timer or somebody who hasn't had that much experience, right. you, you don't have to go as fast as Jim. But Jim, you are saying they should be able to do this too, right? Absolutely. Just, uh, you know... Don't be afraid of doing a project, taking it on, just because it's something you haven't done before. You have to start sometime, you have to learn. So that's why I'm giving a little example here of uh, something that can be done by the homeowner. Yeah. Something that can be done by the homeowner. Yeah. And uh, come out quite nicely to give you the satisfaction of doing the work in your home. And not paying somebody else to do it, like myself. And uh, very nice surfaces here. We have all prepped, primed. Ceiling is done. Ceiling first. Like I had said earlier, ceilings are going to be painted first. And then your walls cut in around top and bottom so we have working on the process to get it final. Yeah. Now I like this. You see he's using a five gallon bucket with this little strainer in there. That's a grid strainer. And even if you're only going to use a half gallon of paint or a gallon of paint, this is the proper, easiest, quickest way of doing your project. In, in a five gallon bucket, you got more control putting, the, putting it on with the roller. Now I know you've seen me do it with a little paint tray. And I've done that for all kinds of little projects, but you can do it this way too right here exactly yeah now Jim does it this way all the time because he's set up that way now if you if you're not set up that way do you have to go buy a five gallon bucket and a paint strainer and all that no if you've got just one little wall to do or a little project and you're not used to doing painting you can get the, the right. paint tray and paint do that and if exactly. you decide later on hey I kind of like painting I'm gonna do this more often Yeah. You can get your paint bucket and a strainer like that and do it this way. Yeah, yeah, it just, uh, you can put more material in a bucket and you have less spillage. Uh, if you're working out a tray, it's easier to move around for me. Yeah. And uh, it just, you pour a gallon of paint in it and you, then you don't have to stop and fill your tray again. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's fairly, and it's recyclable. You can use it over and over and over. Yes, this Paint bucket here. Sometimes, you know, they get flimsy or whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I end up using those liners on the paint trays, and I just either throw it away or I let the paint dry in it, I peel it off. Yeah. And, I'm yeah. cheap, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like me, you know. I, I try to use something to its uh, full capacity and not just use something once and throw it away. Yeah. That's too much of a society agreement. Now see, you can use a you can use a roller just by hand without using the extension. See, he's got a little confined bay window area here. It's almost a little bit easier doing it yeah. without the paint roller extension. Yeah, exactly. You know, and you can have a uh, they make short uh, little short extension rollers, little short ones. Yeah. 
two footer, one footer. Uh, That's true. And uh, when you're doing big walls and big ceilings, it's nice to have a pole. Or, you, yeah. You get more control over. Especially what, hallways. You get a small hallway, you got to have the small yeah. extension pole, don't yeah. you? Or else yeah. you keep hitting it, you got to go up halfway <laughs> and down the other way. Yeah, you don't want to be stuck in a hallway with your br brush and roller. That's across. Now see, it's all in the prep. Previously, he had masked off the window stools yeah. and aprons, and he's got masking tape and his drops down and all that, and then that makes your project go that much easier and quicker. Yes, indeed. You, you know, after you're done rolling everything on, your walls are all done, you uh, strip the tape and the paper off, and then you might have to touch up a little bit, do a little detail work. Mm -hmm. Just like painting a car, you know, you got to go and look at the detail of it and make sure everything's covered nicely mm -hmm. and that's just something that you know good good lighting again and a good eyesight and good vision about how your job <clears throat> your end result will be everything's covered everything's sealed and uh, <laughs> you've got a nice uniform look on your walls very nicely done mm -hmm. And it can be done by the average homeowner. Now see, he's going to have to end up painting around all these windows too. And he'll end up doing that. And then when he gets all done with them, what are you going to do to the windows, Jim? Now I'm going to check the window line against the uh, where the in window is installed. Make sure it might need a little bead of caulking. I kind of roll down there a little bit on the edge just to catch it. And then when I strip the paper or the tape, I'll look down there, it might need a little small bead of caulking, white caulking right down on the edge. Yeah. Just to make it look a nice, clean yeah. look. That's what I always like to do, is just put the yeah. caulking and be done with it. Gives a final look. Gives it a nice final finish. look, especially against these white vinyl window frames. And that's, yeah. most of the window frames nowadays are like that. Yeah, most of them are. Yeah, they yeah. are. Unless you go custom, you know, there's a lot of... People getting red ones. See, he's got that big roller cover that's inch and a, what is that, inch and a quarter lambskin? I believe this is inch and a quarter right here. And he's using that just for around the windows. Mm -hmm. And it's just putting it on a different way and sliding it around. Yep, yeah, <coughs> stuff. And whatever you got covered with the roller, you got. It's got his little handy. And because you're not experiencing a lot of splatter coming off the roller itself, yeah. When you're rolling down these confined areas around windows, you don't have splatter coming off and onto places where it shouldn't be. Yeah. So that's a that's a factor in, in buying your tools, your painting tools. If you want something that's going to really produce for you a good job and work for you, <clears throat> just get some better you know tools. He's putting, he's putting uh, shutters in there, I think.